Now let's work through some examples of some pedigrees. In our first example, we'll discuss nearsightedness. Nearsightedness, being nearsighted, little n, is recessive to being normal sighted, which we would assign a capital N. Let's take a look at what we have in this pedigree chart. We have a male and a female. The male is normal. The female is nearsighted. They mate and produce two offspring, both boys. One was nearsighted and the other one was normal. Over here, we have a male and a female that mated and produced two girls and one boy. The two girls were each nearsighted. So a girl from this family mated with the boy from this different family, and they produced two offspring. One was a boy, one was a girl, and the boy was nearsighted. This boy mated with another female, and both their offspring were boys that were not nearsighted. Based on this pedigree, how are you almost certain nearsightedness is not sex-linked? If you said that it was because more females in the pedigree are nearsighted than males, you would be correct. Here in this pedigree, we have three females that inherited the trait of nearsightedness, whereas we have two males that inherited nearsightedness. Remember that in a sex-linked trait, Typically, only males show the trait, and it's very rare for a female to have it at all, much less have three of them have it as opposed to two males. Next question. Based on this pedigree, what pattern of inheritance is shown? If you said autosomal recessive, you were correct. What is the indication in the pedigree that this is true? Well, if we take a look at this circled area right here and look up at our example of our, our description of autosomal recessive, we have two parents without the trait had a child, at least one child, with the trait. And you can see in our example right here that this, this dad and this mom both were normal-sighted yet had two children that possess the trait, this is a dead giveaway that this is an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern. All right, next let's take a look at another example. Here we have Wardenburg syndrome, where having Wardenburg syndrome, capital W, is dominant to not having it, little w. Well, it probably wouldn't be a good idea to try to decide what's going on here without knowing what Wardenburg syndrome is. And people that have Wardenburg syndrome typically have hearing loss, two eyes of different color or two colors within the same eye, a lack of hair that's white, and also sometimes have white skin patches. You may recognize this female pictured here and her name is Kate Bosworth. Kate has two different colored eyes. In fact, in, uh, not only is this one different colored, it also has two different colors within the same eye. And she has a white forelock of hair right here uh, on the front of her hairline. She exhibits two of the symptoms of Wardenburg syndrome. She's a famous actress. The question is, based on this pedigree, what pattern of inheritance is shown? There's two things here that give this away. First, having Wardenburg syndrome is dominant to not having it. Well, most people don't have it. Most people are recessive. So having this being rare is dominant is the first clue as to which inheritance pattern this is. The second, if we take a look at 
this section of the pedigree right here, we can see that two people displaying the trait that are recessive for the trait have an offspring that is dominant for the trait. If you see this, two people that are recessive to their trait produce someone that's dominant for the trait, that's a great uh, indication that the inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant. So we had two, two ways to be able to tell that that was going to happen there. All right, next, our last example here, example number three, colorblindness. Being colorblind, little b, is recessive to seeing all color, which would be big B. Take a look at the pedigree, and based on this pedigree, what pattern of inheritance is shown? If you said sex-linked recessive, you are correct. What is the dead giveaway in, this, in the pedigree that this must be true? If we take a look at the pedigree, the only individuals that ended up showing colorblindness, the ones that are shaded, are all male. This is a dead giveaway that this had to be a sex-linked trait. No females ended up inheriting the trait, only the males did. All right, that'll do it for our lesson on sex-linked traits and pedigrees. More to come as we do many practice examples of this in class.